Okay, let me get a couple more things together and then we're in business. to computer or to cloud that's happened to me once before i'm going to stop recording and record again and see what happens okay no it just records interesting Jai, welcome to our Christmas Eve party. Yes, all glories to baby Jesus. <laughs> I make a very nice uh, rice nug, but I didn't make it this year because it's just us two. Rice nug. Rice nug. It's basically cure. <laughs> it's basically cure, except I, I put rum flavoring in it and some nutmeg, and there you go. There you go. And blend it so it's, it's you know, completely smooth. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna. Well, you can start whenever you'd like. All right, all right. You can wait two minutes more, or you can jump ahead. Might as well start. Might as well start. I'm wondering, are we all synced up? Like if I were to sing with you, would we be, would we be in time together or? You can try and you might be disappointed. Okay, give me, give me a frowny face if, if it's not working, if it doesn't sound right to you. <laughs> Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shulakaya Surundi Vittam Yena Tatmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Vishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshottarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vinda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 R
हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम
Sapari-prāja-kacharja-sto-tara-sati-shī-shimad-e-si-bhakti-vedānta-śāmi-rāja-prabhupāda-ki-jāya-ānanta-koti-vaiṣṇapinda-ki-jāya-nāma-charja-
pretty much proper order. If they want to move, they'll be in proper order. Okay, that's what we had to do. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about our four rules, four regulative principles, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling, and now no illicit sex. And in the illicit sex uh, department, we left off our discussion with a, a question, really, I suppose, could be put as a question. Suppose a householder couple is following uh, three and a half rules, but they uh, both husband and wife seriously want to follow four rules strictly. So what are the steps that they could take to go from three and a half to four? And we discussed quite a number of them actually last time. Nityam Bhagavata Sevya, to be always engaged in hearing Srimad Bhagavatam or serving devotee of the Lord, because by that Nashta prayeshu abhadreshu, all unwanted things are cleansed from the heart. We talked about strong sadhana and chanting 16 good rounds daily. We talked about avoiding bad association or even weak association and instead keeping good, strong association. Another point was to follow the other three rules. If we're uh, taking intoxicants or um, ignoring or, or violating other rules, then the fourth one will be naturally hard to follow. We talked about cultivating sattva gun because following the four rules doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's part of a whole spiritual way of life, including regulated diet, avoiding food cooked by non-devotees, eating food that's nourishing and satisfying and simple and pure, Krishna prasadam, going easy on uh, hot spices, sweets, rich food, heavy uh, food, um, what is that in, in the Bhagavad Gita? This, this is all food in the mode of passion. Katvam la lavanatushna tikshna rupshna vidhananaha. Where is that? Rajasa sheshta dukkha shoka maya prada. That's good enough. Uh, food that's uh, too hot, too spicy, too sweet, too sour, too salty. Uh, this is all food and passion. And passion leads to more passion. But food which is nourishing and healthy in the mode of goodness, that will help us. And that also uh, in moderate eating. Avoiding movies, TV, mundane novels, and so on, which all distract and agitate the mind. We talked about um, the perils of the internet and especially pornography, which is uh, quite a big deal on the internet. Then, and by the way, if there's any questions or comments or contributions to make, just jump in. Please feel free. I don't have to be all by myself. Um, we've talk, talked about seeing one spouse as a Vaishnava or Vaishnavi first and a spouse second. We talked about being determined to commit oneself to Ekapatni Vrata, uh, 
not to look for sexual companions outside of marriage. And Raja Bihari Prabhu contributed um, if at the time uh, in their marriage when considering children, take the beginning of a child very seriously, chant at least 15 rounds. Uh, and let me just see, move this a little bit. Chant, uh, be prayerful and so on. This is very important, the kind of soul. Let me just move something so I can have more space here. Please let me move this. Well, I can reduce this. That's the other way. Yeah. The kind of soul called into a family will affect the family and its Krishna consciousness for decades to come. Uh, plus, uh, following this principle helps establish the actual purpose of sex in the relationship. Other points for uh, steps from going from 3.5 to 4. Um, if one is having sex more than once a month, then gradually increase the time between instances. And associate with senior householder couples, seek guidance from them on the practical details of uh, going uh, from three and a half rules to strict four. And another point was so, so many are here, isn't it? We could build a whole website of a, or a portion of an existing website just on these uh, recommendations. Take a break from life's routine. Again, Brother Bihari said, uh, perhaps for two days or more and have meaningful discussions on how you want to live your lives, the goal of your ashram, the obstacles, how to overcome them. Make this an ongoing part of the relationship. Not every retreat has to be about the four regs. Um, Vaisheshika Prabhu does this twice a year, I think, or maybe just annually. So that's another thought, um, a, a retreat that where you take a distant look and say, okay, what are where are we going? What are we doing? What do we hope to accomplish here? What's our purpose? Know your goals. Um, have a clear understanding of how you define success in your household or life. We, especially in some cultures, define success as financial or children, going to a prestigious university, a big house, a Tesla, keeping up with the Joneses or Agarwals or Patels. Try to shake off those sometimes deeply ingrained cultural norms that can lead us to over endeavor and overvalue the mundane, which increases passion and can result in favoring uh, 3.5. And the last point we touched on, I think we did touch on this at our last meeting, uh, find ways to associate, associate in a friendly and affectionate manner without a sexual component. Do Krishna conscious activities together at home. Don't have all the Krishna conscious things happening at the temple or Namhata while home life is mundane. Find a way to do Krishna consciousness at home together. Husband and wife can, for example, to the deity worship as a team. Also, some kind of hearing and chanting together. Dis discuss Shastra and its application in householder life. So these are uh, quite, a, quite a number of ways that we can make uh, progress in householder life if we're serious. Uh, and happily, make progress. A few more points that we didn't touch on last time. One is separate beds, 
separate rooms, a little distance makes things easier. This from an Ayurvedic doctor, avoid dressing and undressing in front of one another. Simple, uh, kind of obvious recommendation, but uh, very sensible. Another point, uh, you know what things lead to the next. So don't get started. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to end up at the end of the road, don't get on to the beginning of the road. So you know what things lead to the next things. So um, Prabhupada mentions debt, disease, and fire uh, are easy to stop in the beginning. And later, it's very difficult. So uh, the fire of passion also in the beginning is easier to control than uh, later. So um, don't get started. And uh, finally, uh, um, oh, Tulsi Priya has a comment. Yes. Tulsi Priya may unmute herself and then we'll hear her comment. Sorry. Um, thank you, Maharaj. Um, a couple of these are very trivial, but I think if you're in a sort of a transition uh, stage, it might be helpful. For instance, uh, in our relationship, we went from never watching movies to rarely watching movies to occasionally watching movies. Now we're back to almost never watching a movie and we haven't watched any in a very, very long time. But one rule that we had is that we would go on these sites where they do um, uh, reviews that are for parents who are looking to protect their children from watching certain kinds of films. And we would see if a movie was heavy on sex or whatever, and we would avoid those movies. And if we happened upon a movie in which we weren't notified about some kind of sex in the movie, um, one of us would close our eyes and the other person would sort of squint through one eye to let the other person know when that scene was over. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's silly things, but it was just a little way of, of allowing ourselves that sense gratification without getting too sucked into it. And I, I think it had some beneficial um, uh, effects. Uh, we're not really watching movies anymore. Um, another thing is we would you. not watch. Oh, I'm sorry. Good um, for you. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> We would not watch movies with our friends. In other words, um, very rarely if we were like if we were with family and rather than get into awkward conversations, it might be easier to watch a movie with the family than it would be to get into difficult conversations with them. So that wasn't a problem. But like with other devotees, we would never or very I can't really think of any instances. We would not suggest to people as ways of associating, let's watch a movie together because we mm -hmm. felt like that was, it's our sense gratification, let's keep it in our house and not bring other people into it or insert ourselves into other people's sense gratification. So that, that might seem weird, but that's, it just seemed, it seemed weird to watch movies with other people because we, we knew we probably really shouldn't be doing it, so why do it with other devotees, you know? Mm. And, um, and then, I don't know if my husband will agree with this or not, but, Early on in our relationship, um, my mom gave us some money to buy a car and we discussed the possibility of getting two cars with the same amount of money. And I, I said no, because I said, at least in our, our relationship was a little, you know, it was a little uh, difficult at the beginning. And I said, if we have two cars, we're gonna have two lives and we're not like high powered career people. So this idea of, of, you know, having constant independence to take off wherever you want to at any time, I felt like, you know, we wouldn't be trying to adjust ourselves to do things together. That's not really a sexual thing, but I think it's related to the mode of passion where, you know, you have your own stuff and you're doing your own thing instead of working together and not giving yourself that sort of back door to, you know, go off and do something where the other person doesn't know where you are at, you're at or what you're doing. Um, is there something else? I think that's it. Um, but I, I also, a lot of our decisions in our life, because we're not high powered career people, um, it, it was more the idea of like, well, you know, we sort of built our lives around trying to do whatever service we were engaged in. 
and not so much was it, it was for the career because I think that would kind of give us a freedom to make decisions that were helpful to our Krishna consciousness instead of getting sucked into a milieu with other people that aren't into it so much. And mm -hmm. like, for instance, once I was working in a call center and um, my husband, I think he, I don't know, maybe we had different hours or he ha didn't have a job at the moment, but he would, he would cook me lunch, you know, so I could have prasadam and he would bring me my lunch. And I remember it was all ladies working in the call center and everybody was so impressed that my husband would bring me lunch, but it was really just a function of us trying to only eat Krishna prasadam instead of, you know, eating out or whatever. And, uh, you know, so we've kind of made a lot of little decisions like that that maybe weren't so good for material advancement, but they, I think they kept us from going off the deep end in our Krishna consciousness. Mm. So I think it's something for people to consider. Yeah, a little, a little of this for Krishna, a little of that for Krishna, a little more, then everything is moving in Krishna's direction, and then not Maya's. Yes, you want to add something? One more thing. I've noticed, and I, I think this happens in communities where there are a lot, you know, a decent number of devotees in, in, a, in a same community and they're not too far flung. But I think it's super important for devotee couples to be careful about associating with the opposite sex among their friends. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, you know, sometimes you'd hear stories about, you know, couples associating and it was not really very Krishna conscious. Or you know the 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 husband of one pers of one couple would associate with the wife, and if you said something, say, "Oh come on, we're all adults here," and I'd be mm -hmm. like, "Well, yeah, well that's why." <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yes. Yeah, and then you'd you'd be you'd hear something later on, and I mean I think there's more than one occasion where I go, I saw that coming. I don't know why anybody else didn't, but I saw it. You know, so I think people need to be very careful and not assume they're overly sophisticated and they're not prone to getting caught up in in some you know something that they can't pull themselves out of so easily you know and uh i mean and I'm, when i talk about people getting caught up in things i'm talking sometimes it's very senior devotees sometimes it's very young junior you know um second generation devotees it's you're not you're not exempt no matter how old and how senior you are or you know how young and 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 you know nice wife or husband already and anything can happen at any time really yeah, we, we, no one has ever gotten in trouble by overestimating the power of Maya. Uh, this uh, easygoing or even just careless sort of association can uh, lead to problems, definitely. So that's very pertinent instruction. One time, Srila Prabhupada was, had noted that this, he saw the two places there were two places where Maya was sort of taking advantage in the temples. One was the kitchen and one was the pujari room uh, or the altar because men and women were associating uh, there for service. But still, Prabhupada gave an instruction one time. He said that um, men and women should not be together uh, on the altar serving uh, unless the husband is there. And the devotee was speaking to, he said, some man must be there. Prabhupada said, husband must be there. Mm. So he's quite aware of this uh, tendency, a, a little slackness, a little inattention. And then, uh, well, Maya gets the opportunity to, to do something. We have to be very careful. What is that? Matra svasra duhitra va na vivik dasana bhavet balavan indriya gramam vidvamsham apikarshati. One should not sit alone with one's mother or sister or daughter. Na vivik dasana bhavet. Why? Balavan indriya gramam. The senses are so powerful. No, we're all devotees, we're adults. No, vidvamsham apikarshati. Even a learned person can be dragged into uh, problems. So very good point. Very good point. Thank you. Anyone else want to jump in here while we're jumping in? Bunch of touch for Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. I was, you know, of, of course, this 
pandemic has made things a little discombobulated in terms of uh, you know just reaching out and, and associating and so forth. But another point that I was thinking about was that you don't always have to be with your spouse, and if you develop it, it also runs along the lines of uh, what was talked about earlier about seeking out and maintaining good association. Men uh, can have other men who are close associates in devotional service and spend time with them. Prabhupada talked about this principle of separation making the heart grow fond, but separation at least from time to time is also a kind of protection from becoming, from, from making the mistake of seeing your spouse as uh, an object of enjoyment instead of servant of Krishna. And by that positive association with other Mem other other men, or in the case of ladies, other Krishna conscious ladies, you're protected in the way you associate when you are together. Yeah, it's not all all about um, you know the universe revolving around these two celestial bodies. Um, there's, so to speak, but there's a, a larger context of devotee association and men having their own world and women having their own world. Uh, not all that uh, what freight loaded onto this one uh, relationship. I was thinking as you were speaking that in the traditional uh, joint family system, uh, that advantage is there. In, in the household, there would be several uh, women and several men. So the women would have their own society practically within the house and the men would have their own society within the house. You're hanging out with Doug now, right? You hardly see your wife anymore. Yeah, yeah, we, we've, we've expanded it. Now, now we'll have the outer apartments and the inner apartments. Yeah, sure. But anyway, we, <laughs> we, we, we've expanded a little bit. It's really nice. It's created a very nice added dimension to, to uh, Krishna consciousness in our situation here because more nice association. And mm. also being aware of how we interact with our spouses because other people are around and right. being able to, you know, watch and yeah, watch right. and love. Nice. That's um, right. Thank you. Praveen has a question. From three to five, three point five to four, the methods mentioned are these to avoid sex? What if still one wants to have sex? Uh, it's not to avoid sex, it's to avoid illicit sex. That's the point. The four rules don't uh, mean uh, no sex, but no illicit sex. Illicit sex means um, not for the purpose of procreation. Uh, purposeful sex is approved. Uh, so the point is not to avoid sex. No, we, we approve of sex, but sex according to regulative principles. So these mm, items that we're talking about are meant to support that. Uh, if one wants to have sex according to the regulative principles, that's very good. We don't uh, discourage that. But not beyond the regulative principles. That's the point of these, these different items here. Is that all right? Anything else? I have another item on my list, and that is uh, Asanga Shastrena Dridhena Chitva. In Bhagavad Gita, in the 15th chapter, Krishna talks about the world as being like an upside down banyan tree. Urdhva mulam atashakam, with the roots up and the branches down. Uh, that means a reflection of reality, not the actual reality. And then he says, the sangha shastrena dridhena chitva. One should cut oneself off from this illusory tree. Asanga shastrena, by the weapon of uh, detachment, uh, dridhena, uh, with determination, uh, chitva. One should cut oneself off with 
determination. And that's another element in this uh, project to be seriously determined. Would you like some advice from Hamlet? It's not, sure. in, the, it's not in the Puranas, but I think it's, it's pretty good. This is um, a scene where Hamlet is talking to his mother. His mother has, um, his, his uncle has murdered Hamlet's father and married Hamlet's mother. Uh, so Hamlet is, uh, he and his mother have had some, a fairly strong conversation. He really upbraids her. Um, then he says, good night, but go not to mine uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. That monster custom who all sense doth eat of habits devil is angel yet in this, that to the use of actions fair and good, he likewise gives a frock or livery that aptly is put on. Refrain tonight and that shall lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy. For use almost can change the stamp of nature and either reign the devil or throw him out with wondrous potency. Hmm? So he's basically saying you know, habit just messes up everything. Uh, but uh, good habits can help us. So um, refrain tonight, that means we know that we're not supposed to be doing this, so let us not. And then next time it's easier not to. Next time still easier. For use, that means a custom or, or habit or uh, yeah, practice, really practice almost can change the stamp of nature. We, we, we have a, a passionate nature, we have a, uh, a lack of self-control, we have weakness, but practice can change that uh, with wonderful potency. It can either rein the devil in or throw him out. So the, that's, I think, uh, not bad as far as um, non-Shastric advice. Bunch of tattva, comment. It, 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 it's somewhat related just because I heard it today that Shakespeare, during an outbreak of the plague, was confining himself to his quarters and he wrote, uh, I, I know King Lear was mentioned and I think Macbeth was mentioned too, but this was while he was kind of in a forced seclusion. I thought it kind of interesting that he should come up at this time in the pandemic with some good advice. And <laughs> uh, Priya, Priya says, isn't Shakespeare kind of sort of in pursuance of the Vedic version? Uh, here he is, certainly. Sometimes he's, he's definitely not, but certainly here, uh, Atma Vid Samata Pum Sam, I think, self-realized souls would agree with Shakespeare on this point that uh, by mm, exercising self-control on uh, and, and one uh, today, they will have an easier time exercising self-control tomorrow or the next time. I think uh, the Atma Vid Samata Pum Sam here, that's why I quoted it, it's not, uh, it is supported by Vedic uh, authority. And Tulsi Priya says, isn't this sort of the whole premise of 12 step, one day at a time? You don't need to give up the bad habit forever, just today. I'm not that familiar with the 12 step program, but if that's there, if that's the idea, then it seems sound 
that we're not asking you to do this forever, just do it now. And then tomorrow we'll talk about it again. Uh, and after a while, you know, we don't even need to talk about it. It's gone. So, yes. Um, Haidas says, in a previous meeting, someone referenced a verse in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and you were going to comment on it, but I don't think we got to it. I believe the context was remaining steady despite an inability to follow strictly. Yes, um, let us find that verse. I was saving it actually to the end because I still have some more uh, uh, topics to talk about. But would you like to, but we can go for it now and we can still talk about it again. There's no, uh, no shortage of, uh, or no restriction. The verse is 11, 20, 27 through 28, which let me call up. 11, 20, 27. Jata shraddho matkatasu nirvinda sarvakarmasu veda dukatmakan kaman paritjage pranishradaha tato pajeta mam prita shraddhalur dridtanishchayaha Jushmana Stratan Kaman Duko Darkam Strigar Hayan. Having awakened faith in the narrations of my glories, being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery, but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment. My devotees should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction. Even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, my devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result and he sincerely repents such activities. Purport. Uh, purport's a little long, but we'll start at least. The beginning stage of pure devotional service is described here by the Lord. A sincere devotee has practically seen that all material activities lead only to sense gratification, and sense gratification leads only to misery. Thus, his sincere desire is to engage 24 hours a day in the loving service of Lord Krishna without any personal motivation. He sincerely desires to be established in his constitutional position as the Lord's eternal servitor. And he prays to the Lord to elevate him to this exalted position. The word Anishra indicates that because of one's past sinful activities and bad habits, one may not immediately be able to completely extinguish the enjoying spirit. The Lord here encourages such a devotee not to be overly depressed or morose, but to remain enthusiastic and go on with his loving service. The word nirvinna indicates that a sincere devotee, although somewhat entangled in the remnants of sense gratification, is completely disgusted with material life and under no circumstances willingly commits sinful activities. In fact, he avoids every kind of materialistic activity. The word kaman basically refers to sex attraction and its byproducts in the form of children, home, and so forth. Within the material world, the sex impulse is so strong that even a sincere candidate in the loving service of the Lord may sometimes be disturbed by sex attraction or lingering sentiments for wife and children. A pure devotee certainly feels spiritual affection for all living entities, including the so-called wife and children, but he knows 
that material bodily attraction leads to no good, for it simply entangles one and one's so-called relatives in the miserable chain reaction of fruitive activities. The word dridtanishchai, steadfast conviction, indicates that in any circumstances, a devotee is completely determined to go on with his prescribed duties for Krishna. Thus he thinks, by my previous shameful life, my heart is polluted with many illusory attachments. Personally, I have no power to stop them. Only Lord Krishna within my heart can remove such inauspicious contamination. But whether the Lord removes such attachments immediately or lets me go on being afflicted by them, I will never give up my devotional service to him. Even if the Lord places millions of obstacles in my path, and even if because of my offenses I go to hell, I will never for a moment stop serving Lord Krishna. I'm not interested in mental speculation, fruitive activities, even if Lord Brahma personally comes before me offering such engage engagements. I will not be even slightly interested. Although I am attached to material things, I can see very clearly that they lead to no good because they simply give me trouble and disturb my devotional service to the Lord. Therefore, I sincerely repent my foolish attachments to so many material things, and I'm patiently awaiting Lord Krishna's mercy. So this is a wonderful instruction not to be discouraged, not to become morose, but to continue depending on uh, Krishna and Krishna's mercy and uh, go on serving with uh, determination and confidence that Krishna will help me. Well, there's more here. This is fairly long purport. A question from Tulsi Priya. Yes. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. So maybe a devil's advocate um, position to take here. Um, sometimes you hear people, when you, when you hear kind of uh, instruction like this, uh, some people will say, oh, this is anti-sex, anti-pleasure. It's just somebody that had a bad experience and so they're you know, projecting it onto everyone else. And maybe there are some people in this world who, you know, have nice family relationships and they may have some devotional sentiments, um, but they're not feeling the need to, you know, they don't see the world as a miserable place. So they don't see their sexual relationship as a, as a thing leading to misery and they're happy and their home life is very happy and nice. Um, I don't know where in this world it ever stays that way, but some people at least are in that situation currently um, and maybe for the foreseeable future. And so this, this kind of commentary about, you know, material attachments leading to misery just doesn't have a, a, a foothold in their consciousness. And how would you address such people? Just hang on. We'll find out. <laughs> One suspects that such people are being dishonest. Uh, you know, my, my sex life is always happy. There's no misery from it. Everything's fine. Even from a practical point of view, how much do you enjoy working? Uh, six or seven hours, six or seven days a week. How much do you enjoy uh, working half the year to pay taxes? How much do you enjoy, uh, you know, getting up early in the morning and dashing off to work and working hard, working hard, working hard. That's all a, a product of your sex enjoyment. If it weren't for um, that family relationship, you wouldn't need to work so hard. So then how do you say that there's no misery involved? That's uh, practical. 
<laughs> when, when it comes time to pay the bills, you always complain about all the misery, all the, the, the trouble, all the uh, tension. But you, do, you, you uh, disconnected the two things. You, you're falsely thinking that all of these troubles have nothing to do with my sex life when in fact one is the cause of the other. They're uh, directly related. Uh, apart from that, we have the simple statistic that 50% of marriages end in divorce and how painful is divorce. How painful is divorce? That's 50%. And that causes pain not only for the uh, divorced couple, but if there are children, it's painful for them. And if 50% are, are divorced, that means there's also a fairly large contingent who've decided that they won't go as far as divorce in spite of their, uh, what should we say, uh, the strain and troubles that they're undergoing in their married life. So finally, we're coming down to we don't even get to 50% of the married couples being even, what would you say, tolerably happy. They're so unhappy that they want to uh, quit. So even if we grant that there's some percentage, less than 50, maybe less than 25, maybe, well, choose your number, what you think it might be. Um, but those people, even if they think they're happy, it will be finished. Um, the wife will die or the husband will die. And how much happiness is there in, in sex? It's really very, very small. There's so much more that can be said, but those who are madly attached nunam pramatta uh, they won't see it so for them we we repeat these things again and again and we give them harinam kirtan prasadam uh, go on chanting go on chanting you'll you'll understand something you'll understand something Is that all right? Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Kandu yanena kariori vadukka dukka. No, I like scratching. No, it's troublesome. But that's what we do. There's a note here in the chat box. Bean says, around 20 years ago, when I was a small child in a village, I saw a Dhobi with six children, the seventh in his wife's womb. He was very poor. The wife looked happy and strong, associating with other women. Although they wanted to have sex, they had children. Artificial contraception was not thought of. Although they were poor, they never thought of having children as a financial burden. Later, I heard that all his children were settled in their own capacities. They could not afford education, but had ways of income. Having children could also help from three to five, go, going from three by five to four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that is essentially the difference between three by five and four. At 3.5, you want to have sex, but you don't want to have children, um, generally speaking. And four means that, yes, willing to have more children. I don't know if um, having more children would lead one to think that, um, no, this isn't a burden, because it is, and Prabhupada says it is. Uh, but still, uh, this is, what shall we say, 
accepted. This is for gentlemen. If you want to have sex, have sex, but then have children. Don't try to, if the prophet said, if the process is good, then the result is good. You say the process is good, then why are you trying to stop the result? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, if you want to have sex, have sex, but then accept the responsibility. Anything else on this? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think also it might be worth discussing, and maybe not today, but another time, um, when people talk about, um, you know, when we stress about sex for children, but then people say, well, this is a very real way of expressing love. And, you know, they're very fixed on this explanation and um, there's probably no denying that you feel great affection you know you're with somebody and you're doing something that feels good so granted you know that may increase your your feelings of affection but at the same time it's not the same thing as saying uh that having sex increases your in fact that 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 you know that's a way of keeping the affection going or a way of uh, keeping the relationship together um, I don't, I, I mean, we've, we've heard from couples that, you know, have only had sex for children and they're still together many decades later. And, um, I just wondering, you know, are you talking guess, about hearing this argument from devotees or non-devotees? Uh, well, I, it's not an argument I have with a lot of devotees, but one, one particular, and I have no doubt that there are others. I'd say maybe in my in my my life, I've heard maybe three or four devotees make this argument. Um, you know that. Well, there are problems with it. Um, first of all, empirically speaking, if sex leads to constancy, why all the split ups? Mm -hmm. Lots of so you know, uh, it, it, there's lots of sex out there but not a lot of, what's the word, fidelity. Not a lot of fidelity. It's not that, because everybody, and again, why is the divorce rate as high as 50% and perhaps going higher? Is, is this all celibate couples who just didn't realize that if they uh, went to bed together more often, their marriage would be more stable and more um, solid? doesn't seem, you know, this, the theory doesn't seem to adequately explain the data. That's the first uh, problem. Uh, that's the first problem. Then from a, you know, an analytical point of view, this marriage, you know, closeness and intimacy, that's the preferred word, by the way, on the, um, mm -hmm. some among some counselors for, for his kind devotees, intimacy, that we don't speak of sex, we speak of intimacy. Um, anyway, this, um, if in intimacy leads, the, the, this intimacy really says um, we're together because we're getting sense gratification or an important or if not central part of our relationship is this sense gratification that that brings us so much closer to one another. Um, but the problem is that um, with this picture, um, when the sex is, is lousy, then, um, then what happens to the relationship? Um, did I show that cartoon from the New Yorker, by the way? No, let me find that quickly. Um, if I can, because it's person pertinent. Um, uh, it's hard to find, I guess. Let's see. I 
I know what it is, but I don't know what I called it. That's the problem. Mm. Oh, maybe it's in a different place. Mm. No, it's not there. Let's see, let's see. No. Ah, here it is. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it was worth so much trouble, but it's fun anyway. So let's see. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the um the big secret of a big secret of sex is that it's not it falls far far short of what it's hyped up to be. You know, we're expecting that, um, you know, the sky is going to fill with rainbows and, and oh, you know, we won't go into all the expectations of, of what people think is going to happen. And then, of course, it, 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 who can match all of these um, fantasies and, and uh, dreams? And so when the fantasies and dreams don't pan out, then we think, oh, something's wrong. I've married the wrong girl. I've married the man, wrong man, um, or, you know, whatever it is. And so then um, divorce. And Prabhupada himself has said that this is, you know, he attributed divorce to this kind of um, sexual dissatisfaction. They marry for sex, and then when the sex is not what they expected or hoped for, then uh, divorce. There was something else I was thinking. Or, and this really favors men um, more than women, the, the woman grows old and the man uh, goes looking for a new cookie. Uh, because when she was young and cute, then it was all worth it. Uh, but now she's old. And it's not worth it at all, you know, because there are newer models available. Um, and it favors men because um, I've talked about this before. In, um, as a man grows a little older, his market value goes up. Uh, he st still looks distinguished. He's uh, you know, way up there in his career. He's got money. He's got prestige. Um, so he's, he's good. But as, as a woman grows older, uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, things are sagging and lines are appearing and, uh, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and so the, the, the nice, young, fresh, bright uh, models have, have the advantage. So the man dumps his wife and picks up a new one new, younger, you know, like what you do with iPods, uh, not iPods, uh, iPhones. Um, you know, every two years you pick up a new model with new features and uh, you know, whatever. So uh, if we marry for sex or if we, having been married, we think, well, this is what will keep the relationship together. 
um, then we may be very wrong. And especially if we're a woman and we're thinking this is what's going to keep it together, we may be um, shooting ourselves in the foot as it goes, the expression goes. Um, is that a good enough answer for your, your question, Tulsi Priya? Yes, thank you. I, I also sometimes say to people, well, if, you're, if your spouse were sick, or if they had to go away and, you know, then what do you do when you, when you can't, you know, if it's so, if, if it's all that important, then how do you do without when you're forced to do without? And they usually don't have any answer. Yeah. Yeah. If your marriage is based on sex and now sex is somehow impeded, um, like you're, you're in for real problems. You're in for real Thank problems. you. The cartoon Thank was you. great. Oh, good. <laughs> Love New Yorker cartoons. Yeah. Um, well, I could read further into that purport, but it's uh, a little long, and perhaps I'll save it for the next time. We do have some more material that we can we can cover. And there were also a couple of questions, just to let you know, in the chat. There's questions in the chat. Let's see where we are. One from Athena and one from Megatish. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Venkatesh says, if a given spiritual advice or solution isn't seen to work immediately for some reason, it causes melancholy. How to see it, sail it, sail through it? Uh, yeah, Rupa Goswami says, patience. Um, you know, not everything happens overnight. But if one is confident and patient, then, you know, it's like, uh, what are those things called? antibiotics you know they're miracle drugs but they don't work overnight you take the whole course it takes a week or something and you get the result um we probably gave the example that the a woman's married if she wakes up the next morning and says where's my child uh, no you just serve your husband and be patient and the um, child will come Um, Panchatattva says, when a marriage is based on sexual satisfaction, it's also contaminated by fear. My husband or wife may leave me if they're not happy or satisfied. That worry lingers in the background. Some special kind of love, eh? Yeah. Um, good. Uh, by the way, if you have other topics that you'd like to deal with in this Sister Ghosti, because we won't go on forever with um, the four rules. We will, there is more to life than the four rules. So um, if you do have a particular topic or unparticular topic you'd like to discuss, um, you can let me know or you can just keep it in mind and bring it up when the time comes. All right, thank you all very much. Hare Krishna, all glorious to Srila Prabhupada.